Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. It's rational because we have polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. These are called rational equations. But one thing that makes this from other rational equations is this is kind of like an infinite rational equation because we have infinite series both in the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to talk briefly about infinite geometric series because these are geometric series. We'll talk about the general formula and now we're going to apply the formula to this situation and solve for x. But something we need to do is always check our work at the end because there are certain conditions for which these series converge. All right, that's what we have to pay attention to because in some cases they don't and the solution does not count. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the general form. What is a geometric sequence, first of all, right? If you have something like first term A and then multiply by R, multiply by R, and then keep doing this, this is going to be a geometric sequence. If you look at partial sums or just the sum of these terms, this is going to be a geometric series. And if it goes on forever, this is going to be an infinite geometric series. In our case, the first term is 1 in both cases, actually. So A equals 1 gives us a more specific scenario, which is 1 plus R plus R squared plus R cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, so on and so forth. Now, what is this equal to? Now, this is a geometric series, an infinite one. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate this first. I'm going to show you how the formula comes about, and then we're going to go ahead and use it. This is kind of like a fun thing to do, uh, and uh, it's not that rigorous. i got to tell you, uh, this is kind of like a really uh, loose way to prove it. But anyways, you let me know about it, how much you like it. So I'm going to call this sum S, and I want to evaluate this infinite sum. And infinite sums can obviously be rearranged in different ways. You know, there's a formula which you add a bunch of positive numbers, and at the end you get a negative fraction. I think Ramanujan worked on this, right? There's a really interesting sum, which is kind of interesting because how can the sum of positive quantities be negative, right? That's impossible. Okay, anyways. So, in my opinion, that's impossible. <laughs> okay, so here's how we're going to evaluate this sum. First of all, if r is between negative 1 and 1, this series converges. So, we're going to assume that r is on that interval, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both sides of this by r. So if you multiply everything by r here, r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth power, so on and so forth, it's going to go on forever. And when you multiply the right-hand side by r, you're going to get sur or sr as a product. And now we have two equations. And our goal is to solve for s. Since I got two equations that are kind of similar, because notice that SR actually contains S. How? Here you go. This is S, isn't it? Look at that. The sum that starts with R. That's actually, that's not true. Sorry about that. I messed up. I meant to say SR. Yo, no, actually, this is right. S contains SR. Okay, that's what I should be saying. So S contains SR. So how do you do that? We can go ahead and do the following. This piece is the same thing as SR right? Look at that. This is SR. So this is the same as SR. So I'm going to replace it with SR. Some people do it by subtracting. They subtract two things. They get S minus SR, but I'm going to do it a little differently. I hope you like it. It looks a little simpler to me. I don't know. So the bottom one is contained in the top one. Make sense? So we get the following. 1 plus SR equals S. And obviously from here you can solve for S, right? Put everything that contains S on the same side, 1 equals S minus SR, and then factor out an S, you're going to get 1 minus R. If you divide both sides by 1 minus R, you get S, 1 over 1 minus R equals S, but we like to write S on the left-hand side, so S can be written as 1 over 1 minus R. So, that is our formula for the uh, sum of a geometric series when R is between negative 1 and 1. you got to remember that condition all the time, otherwise this is not going to converge. Obviously, what happens if r is equal to 1? This is going to be undefined, but if you look at the actual sum, you're going to be adding infinitely many 1s, which is not going to converge, obviously, right? That's going to tend to infinity. 
as the number of terms tend to infinity. So it's going to be like 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on and so forth. What happens with the negative case, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1? This is kind of like a funny sum. Maybe you can talk about it in another video. But you can make the sum 0 if you want. Or you can kind of like group them differently and make it 1. You can even make the sum negative 1, I believe. Uh, and on average, we could say, hey, maybe this is 1 half. Anyways, that's kind of like a funny thing to work on, but it doesn't convert. That's why you are able to get so many different crazy things out of that. Anyways, so this is our sum. In other words, 1 plus r plus r squared, r cubed, dot, 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 equals 1 over 1 minus r as long as r is between negative 1 and positive 1. Make sense? So that's our formula. We derived it so we can go ahead and use it. So, but one thing to be careful about is this one is straightforward, right? I mean, what is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed? You're just replacing r with x. So that's going to be 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, great. That's easy. But what about this one? This kind of alternates, right? So you have to do something about it. And this is what we're going to do. I mean, in a, in a geometric series, all the terms have to be the power of the same thing, right? And the powers have to go up by 1. If they go up by 2, then r must be different. Or if they go up by 1 and then 2 and then 3, that's a totally different story, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 1 plus negative x. And then the x squared you can write as negative x to the second power, can't you? Negative x cubed can be written as the cube of negative x and so on and so forth. Notice that our r in this case, if you compare it to the original, then r is going to be negative x, right? So we're going to use the formula for r equals negative x, which gives us 1 over 1 minus negative x. Makes sense? And that's going to give you 1 over 1 plus x. So this is equal to 1 over 1 plus x. Awesome. We got these two things now. We're going to go ahead and put it together. All right, so my equation was 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed dot 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 and then divide it by 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus dot 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 let's erase some of this that's too long and we probably need this much and this is equal to 3 so now we got an expression for both of these things the top is going to be 1 over 1 minus x so let's replace this with 1 over 1 minus x and rep re let's replace the denominator with 1 over 1 plus x remember that was the expression that we got by replacing r with negative x, right? Okay, so now we got a nice equation, a rational equation again, but this time it's not infinite. And if you flip the second one and multiply, you're going to get 1 plus x. Divide by 1 minus x equals 3. And if you cross multiply, you get 1 plus x equals 3 minus 3x. Put the x's on the same side, 4x equals 2, x equals 1 half. And is x between negative 1 and 1? That's what we need to check. Yes, x is between negative 1 and 1 indeed. So everything checks. It's all good and we're happy. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.